Welcome to CNK in the morning on a special edition here in Knoxville on Friday afternoon. It's quite a sunny day here on Homecoming, and we're here to talk about Dooley's job security here uh, on the Knoxville campus. It's not the greatest as it could be, but anyways, here with me. I'm Kaylin Gibson, also reporting with Courtney Fritz. So obviously, Dooley is 0-15 against ranked opponents so far. Wah, wah, wah. And this is in three years' time that he's been here. So let's listen in on to what he has to say after losing to number one ranked opponent, Alabama. I was really upset because I was excited about going and challenging these guys. I just felt like we could have done a lot better. So Dooley is disappointed after losing to Alabama. As any coach should be. But hey, we had confidence after winning our first game against NC State, but we all went downhill from there. So let's look at what Dooley has done since he's been here in the past three years. One of the positive things he's done has been he created the Vol for Life program. And Vol for Life program, they have a Vol for Life coordinator, and it just helps them become better men on and off the field. And it's, I mean, I think it's a pretty great program. What do you think about it, Kaylin? You know, I think it's awesome, too. I mean, it builds character amongst the UT football players, and it prepares them for life after UT football. But, I mean, I have an issue with it. It's like we want to prepare them for a post-graduation, but we need to work on having them focus on current times. (laughs) Right. I mean, if you can't win games now, who cares if you're going to be a great football player after college to say, oh, I was a great football player, but what happens now when we need to win games? Right. Is it really, I mean, it's a great program, but what are we doing with the present rather than focusing on the future? Exactly. I agree. So another thing that he's done is uh, got us into a little bit of debt here. uh, (laughs) We just built a $45 million new football complex, which is great for recruiting if we can actually recruit anyone good. Exactly. Have you been inside it? I have been inside of it. Have you? Yeah. It's fantastic. Like, it's probably one of the best, I would say, top ten in the nation from what I've seen online. It has to be if it's $45 million. I mean, here's some statistics on it. 7,000 square foot locker room. They have a 22,000 square foot weight room. That's fantastic. Have you been in there? Yes. What is it like? It's monumental. It looks like a glass. It's just, it's amazing. It's just huge and it's got so much space and I've never seen more equipment in my life. You could fit probably 200 people in there comfortably. I just don't know if it's worth it. You know, last year when we released our statement, or when Tennessee released our statement, it was $4 million deficit. Like, how do you lose that much money with such a giant income from football games, basketball games, our women's basketball team, men's basketball team. Exactly. I just don't understand that. All right, all right, enough about the football complex. Let's talk about what Julia had to say after his South Carolina game. He spoke of how emotional his players were. Let's see what he said. They're so quick to appeal to their emotions and their feelings at a given moment. Well, maybe he should be a little more emotional. If he's not putting his heart into this, maybe that's why we keep losing. Passion there, question mark? I I mean, you and I are both athletes too, but if I lose miserably and embarrass myself, I'm probably going to go home and cry about it. Yeah, and we're not even sore losers. We're just passionate about what we do, and I mean, I'm assuming that the players are as well. Shouldn't the coaching staff, or is there an issue there, or what's going on? I mean, as a player, you know, you put so much time and effort into this. I don't think, I think Dooley's wrong for saying that his players are too emotional, and Dooley's just so hands-off, just kind of chilling on the sidelines, just watching it happen, like... Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why his job is in such turmoil right now. It could possibly be. And here's another clip from Dooley after losing to Alabama. They pop up when you play really good teams, and there's no margin of error. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that the reason for practice? Don't we practice to decrease the margin of error? I mean, that's the point of it. I don't. Mistakes pop up when you play good teams. Obviously, they're a good team for a reason. But the point of practice is to prepare for those, and they watch so much film. I just don't see where Julie's coming from sometimes. I agree. You have to think about practicing. It's so vital to what they do, and you think that if they do it well enough that they'll be prepared enough for when they have to handle these kind of teams. And you got to step up to the plate when it comes time to play with the big boys, and sometimes we just will step up first half, and then second half, we decide to leave home or leave and go early, go home early. I agree. And real quick, we're almost out of time here, but just talking about Sal Sanceri real quick. He was a linebackers coach at Alabama last year, and we got him as our defensive coordinator. And if anyone's watched any Tennessee football, our defense has been 
not awesome, to say the least. Um, we've given up so many points, and our offense is doing all they can. You know, we're putting up decent scores against decent teams, but we just cannot hold them. So, you know, real quick talking about this, do does anyone think that, you know, maybe South Sanceri really isn't set out to be a defensive coordinator? Maybe he should just stay as a linebacker's coach. I mean, I could definitely vouch for that. I mean, I just – I look and watch our defense, and it just it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to sit in the stands for an hour and a half and watch a great first half and come to the second half and watch our defensive players watch as running backs just fly into the end zone. And it just it – just, you, you think it's like, well, what's going on? What's going, in their, what's going on in their heads? What's going on in the coaches' heads? I mean, this is an ongoing thing. This isn't just happening once in a while. I mean, I watch every game, and it seems to be the exact same – conclusion I agree so as we're wrapping up here uh I think that you know I mean I think that Dooley's job is completely in up in the air right now there's been rumors about John Gruden coming back to Knoxville those are nothing is obviously in in stone here Dooley's not even fired yet um but I mean you know we need better recruiting we have a great football complex that can you know, draw a lot of good players in, but if we don't have the coaching staff, will the good players actually come in? Yep. I don't know if they will, but I mean, if I saw a jacuzzi tub the size of a pool, I mean, I would want to come here, but if it's going to be able to withstand having, you know, a great season, then what's the point? Definitely. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Hope you've enjoyed your our, uh, our talk here about Dooley. And sorry if it was a little critical, but uh, sometimes the truth hurts. Come back and listen again. All right, signing off, I'm Courtney Fritz. I'm Kaylin Gibson. Here from Knoxville.